Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Vani Hudson, and today I'm going to show you how to reset your Windows box. So sometimes this happens, you lock yourself out of your system, you're probably wondering, how do you get back into your machine? Don't panic. In this video, we're actually going to do it using Kali Linux and a really cool tool called CHNTPW. It's built into the Kali Linux distribution. I'm also going to show you how to make a live bootable USB drive, and it's going to be really awesome. Okay, so let's jump right into it. All right, what is up? So we're going to get this going. All right, our goal here is to restore or basically to reset our Windows password since we don't know it. And so from a machine that you have Internet access from, you're going to fire up Kali.org. I'll put all the links in the description and you're going to want to make sure you download this. Now, this is actually an advanced penetration testing Linux distro, so you can do a lot of other things besides our resetting passwords with this tool. We're just going to use it to reset the password on our Windows installation. Right. So what we're going to do is click on downloads, click on download Kali Linux and make sure you grab the 64 bit ISO. This is ideal for people that have greater than four gigabytes of RAM on their Windows machine. Most people do. And that's why I suggest getting the ISO here. Now you can see it's about 2.6 gigabytes in size. So it's, it's really big. Um, make sure you set aside some time for that download to work its way through. Um, looks like I've already got several of these downloads going, but I've already finished this. So we don't even need to um, go through this process. The second thing is you're going to want to use unit Bootin, and uh, this is a tool that will create a live USB drive for Linux. So you can actually boot from our Linux distribution. And I'm going to show you what this looks like in a moment. Click download windows, let that do its thing. Again, I've already downloaded this. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like. So when it fires up, it'll look something like this. And uh, from here, you can select the Linux distribution that you want to create a bootable USB drive from. You can see there's lots of options here. If your version isn't listed and it isn't um, because we're using Kali, we're not using Backtrack, which is the old version of Kali. What we would do is click on disk image, make sure ISO selected, not floppy, <laughs> unless you have a floppy drive, which is kind of weird. Uh, and uh, make sure your version of Linux that you just downloaded is selected. Then pop in a USB drive. Make sure you have at least four gigabytes of space on it. We're going to completely wipe this drive so if you have anything you need to back up and save, do that now. This is going to, this drive is going to be sacrificed for the sole purpose of resetting your Windows password. All right. So we got USB drive selected. We got our, our drive letter. Make sure that the type is correct. You don't want to select your hard drive. <laughs> that would be bad. Okay. Make sure USB drive is selected and then we're going to click OK. Now I've already done this as well. So once you finish this process, it takes a few minutes. Shouldn't take longer than five minutes. You will actually see the contents of the disk. So here's the contents of that USB drive that I've got plugged right now into my machine. And we're not going to click setup or anything like that. What we're really going to do now is we're going to boot to it. So let me show you what it looks like when we boot from this USB drive. All right. So we're going to boot into the BIOS In most mach machines. You can do that by um, hitting F2 or escape. In my case, it's escape your machine. It could be different, but uh, the idea is to press either F1, F2, escape, something like that, get into the BIOS and change the boot order. So you're booting from your CD-ROM. And you should see this Kali Linux screen pop up from here. We're going to go ahead and select the live AMD 64 version. And we'll let Linux do its thing. Now the default uh, credentials that we're going to use to log in is root. That's the username and the password is root spelled backwards. T O O R Tor. So they're trying to be clever with that, uh, but it makes it easy to remember. So root is the pat the uh, username and Tor is the password. All right, so here we are inside of our Kali Linux distribution. We're going to open up the open up the terminal. And let me center this and make it a little bigger so it's easier to see for you. Because I hate watching videos where it's really hard to see the command line. It's pretty annoying. All right, so first thing we need to do, let's just go ahead and see where we are. So we are in Roots home folder. Um, we want to look at a list of all the devices that are hard drives. So the dev folder, for example, if I just type ls dev, this contains a list of all the devices that are visible to the machine. Devices appear as files in Linux. And um, the way to look at all those devices is to go into the dev folder. We don't want all the devices. We just want the hard drives. And that is what this is. We're saying list all the devices that start with SD, which means storage device, and star. SDA, this is the physical hard disk. We have one physical hard disk in the system. 
And then dev SDA1 and dev SDA2, these are two partitions, partition one and partition two on this physical hard drive. One of these partitions contains our Windows installation. I don't know which one it is, so I'm just going to go ahead and mount both of them. So if we type mount dev SDA1, then we're going to mount it in a location called forward slash mount. And then we're going to go ahead and mount the other one as well. Then we can do CD mount and we're going to change it to the mount directory and we're going to list everything there. Sorry, I forgot the forward slash. I can't type today. Cool. Um, and so you can see we mounted it successfully. Now we want to change directories into this folder because this contains our SAM file and that's our reg Windows registry file that contains our passwords. So if we go to CD Windows, I just hit tab to autocomplete it. Sys, dim, tab, 32 tab. So it's a quick way to just autocomplete stuff. And we can look in here and you can see there's a file called SAM. I know it's a file because if I type file SAM, it tells me it's a registry file. So now let's go ahead and use this. If we do sudo change anti password, actually, let's just do sudo change anti password first so you can see the different options you have here. Um, let's make this window a little bigger for you so we can get everything in here. Actually, let's clear it off and let's do it again. Change NT password. So this one right here is the interactive menu. This is what we want. It's a lot easier to use this program when you're in interactive mode. So let's go ahead and type sudo change NT password interactive mode for the SAM file. And you should get this menu that pops up. The first thing we want to do is we want to edit user data and passwords. That's pretty much what we're trying to do. So we hit the number one, enter. And we can see all the passwords that we want to change. Now you can see this one's actually set to blank. That's because before, before I did this uh, tutorial, I had to test it to make sure it actually works. And I already blanked out this password, but you would basically find the account that you want to blank out. Here's your accounts right here, right? So these are all the accounts on the system. And actually let's just do administrator. So you get this RID and you just, you can right click that, copy it, and then you can paste it right here and you hit enter and then what will happen is it'll say what do you want to do that's what the screen section is over here well we want to clear the password that's usually the easiest thing to do so i'm just going to hit one and by the way you can see just some comments here you can see that uh this account is a normal account and the password doesn't expire it's also saying it's disabled so maybe we actually shouldn't um do this one because it's disabled. So let's just go back. So to go back, what you would do is you would hit Q, the quick editing user, back to user select. So I'm going to hit Q and I'm going to go back to one to go back to this edit user data and passwords. And let's just use the Vani account again. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in, press enter. And we want to clear the password. See, this one is not disabled. So we're going to go ahead and clear the password hit one and since it's already cleared it's not going to really do anything but if you see if i scrolled up a little bit see i just scrolled up and it's telling us that the password is cleared for this account so now we're good now all we need to do is save everything so we're going to go ahead and hit q to quit then we're going to hit q again and it's going to say you're going to want to you're going to be asked if there's something to save right so we're going to hit q again and it's saying the hires have changed do you want to write back to this file you absolutely have to do this so hit y and hit enter all right so now we're good um let's go back to the root directory and let's clear the screen um you can see we're in the root directory and let's just go ahead and unmount the mount directory now because if you go back to this the mount directory you can see everything is still mounted we need to unmount it first before we can actually use it. So, meaning before we can actually log into Windows normally. So I'll go back to the root folder and I'm gonna just hit sudo umount and then the drive. Do not type unmount. I know it's tempting, but that doesn't exist. If I type unmount, Linux gets pissed. Okay, so clear, it's sudo umount and then forward slash mnt. Now we're good. And now we can restart. Uh, I think the command is reboot. And when we get back here, we're going to want to make sure that we are booting not to the CD-ROM, but to 
the hard drive. And then Windows is going to boot up normally and we should be able to log in without a password. All right. Find my account. Here it is. It's going to hit enter. Bam. And there we are. We just successfully reset our password. All right. So thanks for watching the video. If you got some value out of it, make sure you thumb it up because everyone loves thumbs up. Share this video with your friends. Leave a comment. And most importantly, Click the subscribe button because that's what keeps me motivated. That's what keeps me doing this stuff. You know, it's really hard for me to crank out these videos like I used to. Uh, you know, I just don't have as much time. But, you know, whenever I get the time to do it, I'm trying to make sure that I deliver that value to you guys. All right. So thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.